All right. Um, so uh, the agenda topic today is to probably conclude my presentation on uh, on uh, on CES topics. Uh, and uh, Daniel is in the minutes gathering some topics for future meetings. Um, among those top, and many of those are pertaining to modules. Um, and uh, and as compartments as framed today are a module loader API. Uh, it seems like uh, bringing in all uh, bringing in the conversations about modules here is a good idea. Um, and uh, yeah, so with that, I will share my screen and uh, resume as we were. All right, we are on slide 32. Um, to recap, we were discussing the ramifications of top level await and how that possibly requires changes to our uh, to the compartment proposal. Um, it's a shame. I, I don't see Sala on the call. I think that he was trying to make uh, a suggestion toward the end of our presentation last week. Um, but uh, I, I think that we can just continue from here. Um, is every does everybody feel uh, feel good about where we left off on this topic, or, or or did anybody have lingering thoughts that they wanted to bring into the conversation today? I I know we abruptly ended our conversation last week. Could you recap the very end of the conversation? Yeah, I, I I'll try. Um, let, 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 let me uh, let me just go over this slide, and maybe it'll jar uh, some memories. Um, so uh, top level await uh, has uh, introduces the ramification that uh, any particular entry point module and its transitive dependencies are collectively asynchronous and must re and and importing such a module must return a promise if any of them have a top level await. This introduces a hazard where a module that uh, that if any of your transitive dependencies introduce their first top level await. Um, and they're the first to do so among your transitive dependencies, you, they could cause, uh, it, pardon, if, if the API we create introduces the possibility that you need to check whether a module is asynchronous or not in order to import it, um, any of your transitive dependencies could break your import, um, either by the fact that, by either because of omission of the logic necessary to check, um, or, uh, or some such like that. Um, in order to, and, and this is interesting because import now currently has this hazard uh, as designed that could be eliminated by folding import now into import and you just always have a promise regardless of whether it's async or not, um, uh, regardless of whether there is a top level of weight among the transitive dependencies or not. Um, or we could introduce a way to observe whether it's async or not. Chip? I, I confess to a point of confusion, mm -hmm. um, which is if I understand what top level await is, and I thought I did, but maybe I don't. I don't understand how the concept of having a top level await in your transitive dependencies is even a thing. Because top level await is a top level await, and if it's in your transitive, Dependencies, it's not top level. Top, top, top level syntactically in any individual module. It doesn't mean that it's in the root module that start that. But uh, the root of the. But, but. Okay, I, I understand where I was confused. I was, I was, I was making a weird mind though where I was confusing await and import. Never mind. Ah, uh, yes. Um, the, uh, the, so there's another alternative approach to solving this problem. That is to say that, uh, that we consider a module fully initialized <laughs> at the point that it, it reaches its first top level of weight. Uh, but I don't think that that's a coherent stance. Um, but, uh, it, but, but I, uh, it, it's an argument I can imagine hearing. Um, yeah. So that's where we were. Um, this also implies that the static module record probably needs to 
uh, to have a property that indicates whether it has a top level of weight because the loading machinery needs to make decisions based off of groups of, uh, of modules that can be executed synchronously, I think. Um, that might not be necessary if we do not, uh, if, if, uh, if execution may have, uh, may interleave turns, but my understanding of the specification as written by hearsay, admitting that I have not read it in detail myself, is that, um, that it does allow for groups, uh, groups of modules that do not have a top level of weight to be executed in a way that does not give an opportunity for uh, events to be interleaved between module initialization. Um, yeah, and if that's the case, then it implies that we need the module loader needs to be able to by observing by looking at a static module record tell um, whether uh, uh, whether it needs to be grouped synchronously. I think. Um, well, so yeah, you obviously can't tell by looking at an individual static module record. You have to look at a linkage track. Uh, yes, yes. In order, in order to know whether an import needs to be async, right? Because yeah, the, the same static module record linked different ways will or will not be sync. Right. My 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 point is that it needs. We, we need a way to know whether a static module. The loader needs to know whether a stat, from the outside needs to be able to observe whether it has a top level of weight, in order to make determinations about what groups. Uh, whether, whether the group it's participating in is in aggregate synchronous, um, is that is that coherent? Yeah, the, the in aggregate means that you're not looking, you're not trying to make the distinction about you're not trying to detect some a property of a static module record in isolation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so uh, so once again. Um, uh, the request for import now came from uh, Modable. Um, uh, uh, Peter, uh, do you have any further thoughts on getting rid of import now and just always having just import returning a promise? Um, you know, we've actually, we've been uh, discussing that this week, um, but always returning a promise doesn't, it really doesn't work for us. Um, um, and so um, we're we're continuing to look at um, ways to deal with that. Uh, I mean, clearly, top level await and synchronous import are are um, at odds with each other. Um, and uh, I mean, from our perspective, we don't. That's not a problem. Like we we would be happy for import now to fail in that case. Like it's 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 not possible to complete. So so it just doesn't work. Um, but um, but the the way that 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 works, um, we we haven't uh, we haven't found a way to completely reconcile with um, the the current uh, the current SES work. So uh, we're 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 thinking on it, but uh, I don't I don't have any specific uh, solution to offer at the moment. Okay, so we should not yet consider this settled, uh, but we don't actually have a end to end coherent. Idea of how to include top, how to include import now. Right, I, I, that's fair. Um, but uh, I mean, the, for us, the problem is real. So we we uh, we're spending some time to see what we can we can do to help here. It would be okay. very interesting to know um, what the motivating constraint is that uh, that makes it necessary um, that, to have the synchronous synchronous import now. Uh, but um, that, that, that's, that's something that we can revisit. Um, I think uh -huh. if I have not already created an issue for this, I will put one on the spec proposal soon and we can have a conversation asynchronously. Um, yeah, no, sure. It's, I mean, it's fairly, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, yeah, happy, happy to do that. It's, it's, it's uh, pretty easy to explain. Cool. Um, Peter, if the addition of import now is, uh, would not change the way import works. Uh, and import is something that we can work out a coherent story end to end. Would you feel comfortable postponing import now to a follow on spec proposal? Um, I mean, I don't think it should mess with import. I think import is, is 
well defined in the language and we've never we've never consciously tried to mess with that um so i don't i don't have a problem with that part of it um i am not i'd like to find a way to deal with the synchronous aspect of this this um now for for, one, for a better term sorry um if we can I, uh, I, I one thing I'll note just because it uh, it struck me as bizarre. I mean, I apologies if I'm repeating myself. Um, the committee was completely fine with synchronous import uh, when we were discussing the standard um, the standard library proposal um, in response to Jordan's um, mm -hmm. desire to make standard modules available to sloppy mode code. Yeah, um, I and, and uh, I mean, yeah, it's I a fair concern about that. But uh, I, I mean, I understand. I mean, it wasn't like universally, globally lauded as the greatest thing ever, but it was quite, quite a bit less controversial than um, what we've raised here, and yet morally equivalent. Um, and so um, I, I'm, based on that, a little more strong in thinking that that we should be able to to solve this in some way. Um, it may be through an optional behavior. It may be through a host hook. I don't, I don't know exactly, but I, I think there's, there should be a, a solution that works for, uh, for everybody here. Um, okay. uh, yeah. If we can't find it, we can't find it. But, uh, and I appreciate everybody's, everybody's yeah. effort. So uh, to be clear, keeping import now and for it be, to be a nonsensical call in cases where there is a top level of weight is a coherent stance. It's just one that introduces a hazard. But uh, yeah, I'm unclear on the hazard. I mean, yeah, your code breaks, but it's a failure. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's action at a distance. I mean, it's it, it's it's survivable. It's just action at a distance. Um, so suppose it, the, the idea is that uh, the the hazard is introduced when you have a large graph of third party dependencies over which you do not have control. Uh, you 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 make yourself vulnerable to some third party. Uh, unknowingly introducing a thing which breaks you when they update their code to do something. Right, and it's very easy for some, for a module author to make that change not knowing. Right. I mean, in some sense, anytime you include a, a, a third-party module, you are opening yourselves up in that way, but this is a way that is particularly easy for somebody to screw you by by. Right. Yeah, well, it's it's relatively easy to do introduce a back a, a breaking change to a library already. This is just yeah. one that is subtle, and one of the potential solutions to that problem is to socialize that subtlety. But the other is to just not have that problem. <laughs> but it but it does. I mean, I, I don't disagree with anything you're saying. It does fail very uh, very early and very strongly, though. So at least it's. Uh, I mean, it's not something that's subtle that'll be lingering for three years as a problem before you notice like it will it will show its face um yeah, and it, that's, it, so. that's more or less what i was thinking is that it will be a, a quick error mm -hmm. yeah and that's and that's a principle we followed elsewhere any any error that reliably happens in development um so you can avoid uh, uh you know deployment surprises uh is a a the least unpleasant of a of a surprise this is this is a little bit less. This is a little bit less easy than that to solve because it involves cutting a patch release in order to fix, uh, like rolling rolling back the change and, and releasing a uh, uh, releasing a patch in order to get rid of the top level of weight. Um, so so there's like there's there's a social loop, but that also is common in practice. So, um, yeah. I, I, again, I do not have strong feelings one way or the other. Um, uh, the, that I think that there are coherent stories for this uh, as, as, as long as we tell the full story for both, uh, in, in both cases, I think that it's survivable. Um, okay, cool. Well, I think that we have a stance in order to, to have a conversation and make a value judgment and maybe get some more information about the necessity. Um, I, I, I think that I think that Peter has hinted that the necessity drives from the cases where there are uh, effectively built-ins um, in compartment. In the compartment API, the, the moral equivalent of a built-in is, is a, a namespace that was provided in your module map upon construction. Um, and, and for those cases, import now should always work. Uh, yeah. All right, cool.
uh, the conversation uh, to continue uh, on GitHub. Um, okay, this was uh, in order to, uh, the, the, uh, the, for the proposal I'm, I'm pitching here is motivated by the need to, um, uh, it, it is motivated by the requirements necessary to provide a somewhat faithful emulation of nodes existing library linkage. Um, the import hook uh, currently returns, um, it currently returns a, a, a static module record. Um, we found it necessary in the CES shim to add, the, add an aliasing feature so that if you could say, instead of returning a module record, you could say this, the module record you're looking for exists underneath a different name in this compartment. And the semantics of an alias um, uh, are, in, it, this is in particular necessary to support the case where Node.js has a module named foo which corresponds to foo slash index.js. And the reason why you need an alias in that case is because the module referrer, uh, the referrer specifier in the, uh, in the corresponding static module record is different than the specifier under which it was imported. Um, so uh, the idea here is to overload the type of the return value of the load hook or import as it is written today such that it can return a static module record or an object contains a record and uh, an alternate specifier and possible and optionally an alternate uh, compartment from which to import it. Um, Let me just clarify something terminology wise. Uh, you said import hook or, you know, as it's called today or load hook, uh, the hook we're talking about does not itself run any of the modules own initialization code, correct? That is correct. 